Welcome everyone to the Campus Waterfowl Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Christians, and this weekend for our Collegiate Waterfowl Tour, we are at Iowa State University here in Ames, Iowa. Uh, this was a, another last minute trip planned with everything going on. There's a lot going on in the country right now with seasons closing and opening and all these different things are happening, uh, but we were able to get in contact with the Iowa State DU chapter here and find out that it was the northern portions of Iowa's duck opener. So we were here for that. Um, if you guys are watching on YouTube, uh, we're kind of just hanging out here at uh, Logan's place. But if you guys are listening to the podcast, you guys are missing out. You got to watch the YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, you're all good. Um, but first, before we kind of get into some of the topics we're going to be discussing, like what duck opener was like this, this year and maybe compare it to other years, what you guys have been seeing, uh, maybe leading into maybe what your thoughts are going to be for regular season. Um, we'll definitely touch on the DU chapter itself. But before we get into all that, we got to thank some sponsors of our Collegiate Waterfowl Tour. First off, we got Ken Cartridge here. If you guys are watching the video, you can see we got a uh, big sleeve of ammo in front of us that Ken Cartridge uh, made this year. It's called the Bayou Blend that you might have seen on social media. It's their, it's their fast steel plus loads with it's a 3.5 stack load. And it's um, kind of a, a cool campaign that they're doing where whenever if you guys are in the stores, you buy one of these, the some of the proceeds of this sleeve go to, um, I think it's the Mossy Oak Gamekeepers. Um, I don't know if it's the foundation or what, whatever, how they call it, but uh, the Mossy Oak Gamekeepers. So a uh, really cool thing that they're doing this year. It comes in a, in a bottom land sleeve. So be sure to be on the lookout for those in at a local retailer. Um, and then... Another sponsor we have this year is the Spondow Arms uh, shotgun. So we're shooting their new S2 guns this year. And Logan actually got to shoot it this um, this morning. So we'll get his thoughts later in the podcast on, on how what his thoughts are on that. But uh, we want to thank Ken Cartridge and Spondow for supporting us and supporting uh, collegiate waterfowl hunters around the country. So um, let's do some quick introductions. How do you... Yeah. You guys feel good about that? Oh, yeah. Start there. Yep. Tim, right. you want to start us out since you're on the right side and we'll work our yeah. way down and say your position in our chapter? All right. Uh, I'm Tim Moon. Uh, I'm born and raised in Oswego, Illinois. Uh, I grew up waterfowl hunting my whole life pretty much. Um, I am currently the treasurer of the Iowa State Ducks Unlimited chapter. Uh, this is my third year with Ducks Unlimited. And then I'm Logan Conway. I'm the president of our Ducks Unlimited chapter here at Iowa State. Um, I ran it last year and this year now, um, gaining some experience in my, under my belt. Um, but I actually didn't start duck hunting um, until my freshman year of college. A buddy got me involved, um, which later led to me joining DU. Um, probably the greatest decision I could have made. So i um, very excited to be here today. Heck yeah. Uh, sorry for the, the voice. I lost it earlier this morning. Um, <laughs> But I'm Gage Mills, um, born and raised in Cedar Falls, Iowa. I think I started duck hunting maybe when I was about 16, um, but I did plenty of other hunting before that. Um, this is I'm the vice president of this chapter, and this will be my third year with Ducks Unlimited. Third year, and the fun, the cool thing is, is like this is my this isn't my first this isn't my first time meeting all of these guys. I've met them all. Um, down at Third Term Ducks Unlimited's um, Collegiate Leadership Summit where they have hundreds, I think there was over 300 students there this last year. Mm -hmm. it was um, packed. Yeah, we might have to talk about that a little yeah, bit we too. We can go into that right now Yeah, so, but yeah, we, um, I got to meet all these guys, so um, f uh, familiar faces. It's been fun, uh, fun weekend where we oh, finally yeah. got to go on uh, a hunt together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you made it out. Mm-hmm leading into opener like what were you guys seeing and like what were you guys looking for Tim you want to touch on that a little bit you uh, did yeah most I'll, of the scouting. I'll start out um so I've had a little kind of background with this spot uh every year since my freshman year we've been going up there for north zone opener um and just on the top of my head I thought might as well go see see what it looks like and so this past Wednesday we me and a couple buddies went up there and Got on top of the hill, glassed the ponds, saw a good amount of birds, and thought, why not give it a shot and reach out to Campus Waterfowl, see, see if they want to come down and kind of get a little glimpse of what hunting is like in Iowa for North Zone Opener. Yeah. Yeah. 
you're seeing a, were you seeing a good number of birds and everything up there and, and like even from years past like was it more or less like yeah um, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna jump in here i think i think a big factor this year kind of different from other years is how how hot it is here in iowa right yep. now um it's about 86 degrees i think usually this time of year um we're probably in the low 60s throughout the day not n not ever this hot um like today's hunt, for example, um, we were expecting the wind to play a little bit of a, more of a factor. Um, it was coming out of the north. Um, the weather app was telling us 10 to 14 <laughs> mile per hour winds today, and it ended up being six miles per hour. So yep, um, that kind of played that a much. that kind of played a factor into our hunt quite a bit today. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, I I would say the numbers were probably about normal, maybe a little bit above average. Thankfully, this year we had quite a bit more rain so a lot of the ponds that we tried to hunt last year that were dry this year had a lot of water so that definitely helped with the bird numbers and i'd say there's pretty good kind of distribution of your basic teal wood ducks and mallards and a couple other big duck species mixed in but i'd say overall is pretty average mm -hmm. um but definitely a lot better than last year with it being so dry. Yeah. I can also, agree with that. It also helps that, like, we had rain, this a lot of rain this spring. Um, helped with nesting and all that up there, up in the north zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, it was fun listening kind of to you guys or to you guys when you when we were out hunting because – kind of throughout the morning you were checking in with your, your buddies and everything of, like, how they were doing. Oh, yeah. And yep. you couldn't like sometimes you you wouldn't even want to tell them because it was a tough hunt yeah, yeah it, it was it was and and so like hearing like what what are your thoughts on just how the hunt went um i think it was it was a perfect morning for a hunt especially um the amount of birds we were seeing in the morning um everything like that it, it like everything was like leading up we're like this is gonna be a good day right off the bat um the biggest issue though was that wind as we kind of mentioned um we had our we had our spread out there and the Ducks were just kind of flaring right when they were getting into our spread. We didn't really want to take any pokes at them. Uh, they weren't really great shots. Um, so we did take the shots that we had the best opportunities to, to shoot them. So, um, yeah, that that played a big factor today, I believe. So, but, yeah. But a good number of birds, I would say. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. Just a lot of birds around. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say we did about everything right that you think you could do. Like Logan said, called for a decently mild north wind, and so threw the decoys out. Obviously, wanting the birds landing into the wind, and pretty pretty good spot. It was like kind of off a little cove uh, from a creek, and I thought birds would have dumped in perfect, but like Logan said, the no wind that really really killed us. The birds just did not want anything to do with the decoys they kept on short stopping um and the, granted the body of water that we hunted was decently sizable so the birds had quite a few areas to land which made it a little bit difficult to try and pull them over but i think we did the best that we possibly could and still I, had some fun yeah and i think going back to the bird numbers um we were looking at those migration reports um, Thursday night we had like about 836 million birds start pushing down and that's not specifically ducks it's all bird species um, that's, that's qu quite a big number and then over last night um, there's a feature on the, the website I went to where you can actually look at the county um, last night about 336 million birds flew over um, mm. from the span of like 7 p.m. all the way to like 4 a.m. Um, so the birds were definitely there today it just came yeah. down to the th different factors that yeah. went into it. Yeah, it's crazy to think of all the variables that have to come mm -hmm. together to actually make a hunt come, like, yeah. actually, um, yeah, come together. Um, man, I'm just out of it from... <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're all kind of tired <laughs> right now. And after yeah. just having, like, a Zoom. massive meal, what, where did we eat again? What was that place called? Smoking. So, yeah, we ate at What You Smoking smoke, in man. Good old Luther, Iowa. Iowa so. From camping out to then hunting all morning to now getting back and or hunting and then eating and not podcast it's like holy smokes i can't even think <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, understandable <laughs> um we can kind of talk about our day yesterday if you want like what we kind of did 
um, leading up to the hunt with the whole camping situation, what that looked like for us. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that so? Yeah, I mentioned the, the camping. Is is camping out at a public spot like fairly normal or kind of just maybe uh, opener deal? Yeah. Opener, so yeah, yeah. It's definitely the opener. Um, I feel like that's every year. Um, it's always the same scenario, especially. I'd say for teal and big duck, um, big duck's a little bit more, there's more hype around it for sure. Um, but yeah, so we, we kind of got out there at four o'clock last night. Um, we set up the Blackstone, made some Philly cheesesteaks, um, had a little bonfire pit going. Um, so it was a long night and we shared a lot of good stories around the campfire. So very grateful for those memories we made. Um, that's kind of the beauty of all coming together for the outdoors. Um, and not only that, just seeing the beautiful sunset go down and kind of putting the ducks to rest before we got after them in the morning although it was a little rough of a hunt but it's the beauty of the nature so yeah i mean i would say camping out as much as it sucks having to sit out there and stay up it's also it's one of my most favorite parts that i look forward to just being able to just hang out with everyone and just have a good time and then run to the marsh at midnight and try and <laughs> beat everyone else and throw out your decoys before someone else tries to come and steal your spot and then sleep out in the marsh like it did today. <laughs> yeah, we got watch the campus like, waterfall story. We got some good pictures of Tim sleeping. Yeah. There's, some, there's some funny stuff. Yeah. yeah, but no, I think um, it was a good hunt. We did what we could. Had a good time, made a lot of memories. and Oh, yeah. Got a got – a, you guys will have to tune in to the YouTube video. That will be out here soon. Absolutely. So, um, to watch that and how the day unfolded. Mm -hmm. um, so let's. I kind of want to dive into even your guys' backgrounds of how you got into waterfowl hunting a little bit more um, and kind of like why why is waterfowl hunting so special for you guys. Yep. Um, Gage, you talked about it a little bit, but how did you get or who introduced you to waterfowl hunting? Um. I kind of introduced myself. Really? Um, I grew up uh, deer hunting and pheasant hunting and turkey hunting um, with my dad, um, and we never really duck hunted. Um, and I think I kind of got it from kind of the social media. You see all the duck hunting videos, mm -hmm. watching Daybreak back in the day, Dive Bomb, when they actually kind of when they were up and coming. Um, I just went out and did it. I think I had a six pack of decoys, two of my other buddies. <laughs> shot one wood duck and kind of hooked me from there <laughs> you uh, saw that one wood duck <laughs> yeah, through the yeah. tree and you're, you're just yeah. like oh my goodness uh, um but no it it uh it's grown a lot a lot more decoys <laughs> um but i i like duck hunting for the the camaraderie of it mm -hmm. um you know deer hunting you're sitting in a stand or whatever you don't get to talk right so, yeah. i love i love the camaraderie of duck hunting mm -hmm. and it's beautiful can't beat that yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Logan, you're sharing your story a little bit with me. Um, what's your background? I think yep. I think it's pretty interesting. I think the listeners will like this. Yeah. So I uh, actually grew up in Chicago my entire life. Um, nobody in my family was ever involved in hunting or anything like that. I never really th saw myself to go out hunting or get involved with anything like DU. Um, I actually came to college here freshman year. Um, one of my best friends I met at my dorm my freshman year. Um, actually introduced me to Ducks Unlimited before I started hunting. Um, so I got involved with Ducks Unlimited. I'm like, hope to meet some people that actually hunt, uh, learn how to do it, how to go about the processes. Um, went to my first DU meeting. I actually won my, my first shotgun at our banquet. So it's a Franke, uh, 20 gauge Affinity Elite. Um, I actually played the federal shell pull game, spent about $40 and won that shotgun. But it was the f first thing I needed to start hunting. So, um, Right after that happened, I think my first hunt was my sophomore year. Um, we went out to a bigger lake here in Iowa, um, and I think Tanner and I shot four birds that day, um, and I just got hooked immediately, like right after that first day. Um, and I like DU's mission, which is why I originally got involved with that. Um, just the idea of giving back to the wetlands and habitat. Um, I thought it looked great on a resume. Um, not only that, just to get back to something that I later found out I enjoy so much. Um, and funny enough, I told the story yesterday, but, um, I was kind of glancing through my mom's Facebook one day, kind of looking back at pictures of me as a kid. Um, and there's a picture of me sitting in a restaurant wearing a Ducks Unlimited hat, probably when I was about seven or eight years old. And at the time, I don't think my family or I had any idea what Ducks Unlimited was <laughs> or 
anything like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that I got involved with uh, DU hunting in general. Um, kind of mentioned earlier is just the beauty of the nature and um, actually getting to see all these different kind of duck species and learning more and more every time I hunt. I feel like um, we got a good group of guys in our Iowa State Ducks Unlimited chapter where we share a lot about hunting and um, trying to give back the most we can. So, Tim? Yeah, so my dad grew up his whole life hunting with uh, his dad and his grandpa. and They mostly deer hunted, but his grandpa had duck hunted back when, in the old days, when there weren't limits and you could see millions of ducks in the sky and um so he kind of just i would go deer hunting with him every once in a while and i every winter he'd always go goose hunting with a buddy um we live right outside of the chicagoland area so we get all those local city birds that are not the smartest birds so you can fool them pretty easily um and one year, I I remember I was about seven years old. I asked my dad, I'm like, can I go goose hunting with you? And he's like, sure. And woke up the next morning. I remember it was maybe 10 degrees, and there's probably <laughs> six inches of snow on the ground. And it was me and him and a little late on blind with his other buddy. And his buddy shot his limit before us. And so he left. We got out there. And I remember me and my dad laying in the lay down blind and free pack comes in and they uh, land over top of us probably 100 yards away and we're sitting there waiting to see if they come on back and he's like, nope, screw this. I'm getting out. I'm going to go shoot them. And I'm sitting there laying in the lay down blind and next thing you know, I hear bang, bang, bang. And there he comes walking back with three geese in his hand and I'm instantly that got me hooked and <laughs> throughout my whole life i've goose hunted um mostly goose hunted we don't really get too many ducks until after duck season closes sadly um that's kind of the hurt with living in the metropolitan areas it doesn't we don't really get crazy amounts of ducks we just get crazy amounts of geese but i'll take what i can get um yeah, ever since that one time I went hunting with my dad, I just never stop. Always keep on wanting to go out and get some more and just absorb the beauty of the nature. Mm-hmm. What's it been like um, transitioning from like high school and just younger hunting um, to now like in college where you're kind of with a whole different group of people now and having to, I guess, work with all those different dynamics? I can't really speak on that one. Yeah, I start till college. He started so. in college. <laughs> I mean, I would say I was pretty head over heels for it the first few years, and then kind of died out a little bit, like throughout grade school. Every once in a while, I'd be pretty eager to go out. Um, and then, like freshman year of high school, I don't know what sparked it. If it was something with social media, or just all my other buddies. Um, started hunting more mm-hmm. um and i just started to want to go out like every day possible um and since freshman year i i just been hitting the grind of trying to hunt as much as i can and just have the best of luck that i possibly could mm-hmm. um after g- graduating from high school and coming here uh thankfully i met my roommate through facebook and little did i know he's pretty big uh goose hunter he's from wisconsin so we had a kind of a little bit of a similarity right there um and he took me up to his place for early goose season and killed a couple geese got a couple bands and just kept the grind going and probably hunted the hardest I've ever hunted freshman year of college. Yeah. I mean, we probably hunted at least 50 days of duck season in Iowa. It was every morning at like 2 or 3 o'clock we'd wake up and 
drive out to the marsh and secure the spot and wait for the birds to come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so. something we were talking about yesterday, too, is just the fact that it's nice being in college. You can kind of design your class schedule It'll be later towards the afternoon, so we can kind of sneak out on the weekdays while the older guys are mm -hmm. working throughout the day. So um, that's probably been the biggest blessing of college hunting from, from my experience. There's a reason my uh, <coughs> my classes are at 11 o'clock on yep. Tuesdays and Thursdays yep. instead of uh, 8 a.m. <laughs> when it comes to – so we got, I get messages uh, a few times where, like, especially early on in the season, students are wondering, like, what do they do with their gear when living on campus or, okay. like, just coming in uh, to college? Like, how does one – have, like you have all this gear like what do you do with it so what are some things that you guys would recommend for those out there that are maybe facing some of those challenges um, coming to college maybe for the first time or still just haven't figured yeah. out what to do with all this gear um one of the biggest things that i've seen um we at least do here at iowa state um in our du chapter too sometimes um usually so like i came out here to iowa state on a limb um i didn't really have that much hunting stuff my freshman year so i didn't really run into too many troubles but um, from running the chapter and things like that, we usually put them in contact um, with an upperclassman or somewhere who has a house or an apartment to actually store their stuff. Um, I know people freshman year that would leave all their stuff in their trunk. Um, not that I think that's the smartest idea, but it worked for some people. Um, but we try to keep that like buddy system going where you can have an upperclassman to kind of take care of your stuff for you mm -hmm. um, when you're not using it and you can come pick it up whenever you need. So. Right. Right. I know there's been a few times, even when I was in college, like we brought our waders into the dorms. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> like you gotta dry them out. A stinky. Yeah. <laughs> so it might stink for yeah a week or two. But oh, man. yeah, I mean I know that s some colleges, um, like ours, has an armory, and I believe that you can kind of register your firearm with your school, and they can hold it, and then whenever you want to get it, you just go to your armory and check it out um and i know police stations also do the same thing uh you can just go up at uh go to the front desk and ask them say do you guys like store firearms um i me and a buddy waterfall hunt around the area and i live in a dorm where we can't keep firearms and i was wondering if you guys store firearms and hmm. i can check them out whenever i need it um decoys like Logan said, that's usually kind of like a buddy system. Um, when I came to school freshman year, I did not have a vehicle, but thankfully my roommate did. So he just kept everything <laughs> in the bed of his truck. Um, but I think uh, keeping decoys in the car is probably one of your Best better parts. bets because as nice as it is to keep them with buddies, sometimes they're not always around for you to stop by and grab them. Um, but. I was <clears throat> I was blessed. I live an hour and a half away from Ames, so I went home to hunt uh, <laughs> freshman year, but now I, I'm in a house and I can do everything here, which sure. is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, before we get too far into this podcast, I do want to bring up that in a couple of weeks there was an event happening here in Ames. Oh, Am yeah. I right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, all right. Totally. Let's let's discuss that a little bit and, and sell it. Sell it to yep. all the listeners. So um, here at the Iowa State chapter um, for Ducks Unlimited, we're hosting our 40th annual banquet. Um, we actually had this conversation this weekend, but um, we are the oldest college chapter in the country. Um, so, yeah, our event's coming up here October 12th. Um, it's at 5 p.m. up in North Ames at the Moose Lodge up there. Um, we have some games we're going to be playing, um, live auction, silent auction, um, and we're having some food catered in from Smokey D's, um, along with having a pretty big general raffle this year. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to the event. Um, last year we had our best banquet to date. Um, so we're looking to top that this year. Um, it looks like we're going to have a good turnout so far. So Sweet. And what are your goals? Uh, you mentioned this weekend was to become a bronze chapter. Do you yes. want to explain what that is? Yep. So we actually received the Grand Slam Award um, at third term this past summer. Um, Tim Gage and another gentleman by the name of Drew um, actually went down to third term this past summer. I went the year prior. Um, but we got the Grand Slam Award, which is 60% growth um, for, what is it, net profit um, attendance for members, like members-wise, yeah, and then attendance at our event. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, we, we got that award. Um, but I remember two years ago when I was at third term, my goal for our chapter has always been to get at least that bronze chapter. Um, I want us to continuously grow. Um, we fell short a little bit last year. I think we were close to that $23,000 range. Um, in order to be a bronze chapter, you need to hit $25,000 um, in net profit from the, the event. Um, I think we made over twenty six and a half last year, and then you got to factor in the catering costs and the, the venue and things like that. So, okay. yeah, that's a big goal of our chapter this year. Um, we've been kind of ramping things up as well. Um, so I'll kind of just jump into that quick. Um, this year's been kind of a lot different for recruiting events. Um, we ha we went to Club Fest again this year, uh, but it seems like we got a lot of new freshmen involved with Ducks Unlimited. Um, we started out th this year with about 18 or so members. Um, after Club Fest, I think we were close to, what, 35, 40 in the room yeah. at our meetings, and they're, they're consistently coming too. They're not just going to one meeting and stop showing up. So, yeah, this, this year has been a huge growth for us, um, especially for new members and then being able to acquire a little bit more donations with the extra help that we have on deck. So mm -hmm. it's been pretty good. Tim, you got any words or gauge? It has been nice having uh, some extra hands around to help with stuff, whether it be moving uh, donations up to the storage room or something like that. But mm -hmm. I, think we'll have a, I think we'll have a good banquet this year. Oh, yeah. What are, uh, what are some things that you guys do outside of just the planning of the banquet throughout the semester that you guys do with yeah. the chapter? Yeah, so we're kind of implementing some new things into the chapter. Um, over the past couple of years, I remember my freshman year, we weren't so involved just outside of our banquet. That was like our main event every year. I uh, didn't do too much as a chapter outside of that. Um, we're going to talk about pumpkins. Yeah, we're going to oh, talk yeah. about the okay. pumpkins. Bring that up. So, yeah. so I'll get into that here in a second. Right, but right. Um, necessarily um, – we host a meeting every Monday from 5 to 6 p.m. Um, that's what our weekly routine looks like, uh, kind of leading up to our banquet. Um, this year we actually tried out a tailgate for the first time um, for the Ducks Youth Competition. Um, we had an okay turnout. People were kind of coming and going, so we, we kind of learned it was our first year doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so hoping for a better turnout here next year. Um, Gage and Tim will be running the chapter here. So um, Another thing we kind of do outside of the, our, our banquet is we have a pumpkin painting event. So um it's coming up here probably in what a week or two yep. um it's usually like a couple days prior to our banquet um we'll get everybody at somebody's house i think we're going to do it in my place this year um we'll have a bonfire order some food and then um we actually paint five pumpkins believe it or not um typically with a duck on there a du logo maybe um our iowa state logo um and the way the pumpkins work um so we keep our banquet every year in october um it's always the same time of year um, and the pumpkins we put on live auction um, for a one in five chance to win um, whatever gun we choose to put up on that event um, every year. Um, wh which one do we have this year? It was the uh, on the pumpkins. Yep. It, we have the Rite, I think believe it's the GSX pump. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we have that up on our pumpkins this year. Um, like I said, we got involved with the tailgate. So then we'll have our event, um, and then it's kind of like what what are we looking for after that? So um, we're, we're kind of thinking of like a marsh cleanup day, um, where we go out as a chapter and do something like that. Um, I know last year we built some wood duck boxes as well. Um, so yeah, we're, we're kind of just open to more ideas here throughout the spring, um, because most of our involvement's in the fall. So if we can get some more engagement and involvement in the spring, I mm -hmm. think that'd be very beneficial for the growth of our chapter. It's just, we've got to think of more ideas and be a little bit more creative mm -hmm. when it comes to those things. So. You guys just have uh, a fall banquet. There's no, like, kind of big event that you plan for the springtime? No. No, nope. unfortunately not. No. There so. has been talk about some duck banding, though. There has oh, been there has been talk about sweet. that. Yep. Banding some bluebills, I believe, Kevin was yeah. talking about. Yeah, I think it was bluebills. Bluebills down on the south. It's scalp, too, Yeah, maybe? lesser yeah. scalp yeah. down on the <coughs> south, southeast end of Iowa. Mm -hmm. Well, that's sweet. Now, the I think, it, yeah, setting your a goal – it's super important for a chapter, like having that, especially like that bronze. It's you, that's something that you guys can work for and then like accept yeah. um, at some point down at third term. Oh, so absolutely. What are your thought? What are your thoughts on third term? And and maybe talk about third term a little bit. Like explain it. Yeah. So I don't know if we've had different experiences, but I guess I can kind of go into my experience going down there. Um, but it was probably one of the best weekends of my life, to be honest with you. And I actually motivated Tim, Gage, and Drew to head down this past year. Like, I told them all about it. 
I shared it at our meetings, talked about it, how much fun I had. Um, and it's, it's a pretty neat thing Ducks Unlimited does. So I think there's, what, 88 college chapters that go down roughly? So there's – well, I don't know how many total chapters are in attendance, but I know – so DU's Ducks University like program, but yes. how many mm-hmm. new chapters there are in the country. I think it's right around like 120 right now. Okay. So, yeah, there's a ton. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, so we that that's hosted down in Memphis. Um and it's cool because you get to meet all these different college chapters, different people from all over the place, talk about your hunting experiences. Um, not only that, it's, it's big for your DU chapter. Um, so I'd encourage like any officers or um, chairs to get involved with it just because of the fact that um, it's a whole weekend of just learning how to grow your chapter, um, get started, um, use better social media engagement techniques. Um, and, yeah, I, I, it was an awesome weekend. Um, there's a lot of games and fun prizes to win. Um, and I met, like I said, a lot of cool people I never thought I'd meet, and I still talk to some to this day. So um, do you guys want to kind of speak on your experience then from this past year? Yeah, it, uh, it was a blast. Um, I can't even tell you how many people I talked to down there. I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan now. Never thought <laughs> oh, I'd see no. that coming. Dogs. <laughs> yeah. um, and that, that game's tonight. tonight. Yeah. That yeah, game's that tonight. Game Alabama, tonight. Alabama was, Georgia. I was, I was texting Caleb early about it. Caleb, if you're watching, <laughs> go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it, it it was an awesome experience. Um, got to meet, I mean, from a worldwide. I mean, we talked to um, the Montana chapter. He's from Alaska. Yep. Like just to hear about all the different experiences, coast to coast was awesome. Mm-hmm. How does that um, like just change your like, yeah, affect you as a person? Like hearing those perspectives and all that kind of stuff. Like as a duck hunter, as a person, like, like how does that like. How, how, how has that changed you and just how you look at things? Or has it? Um, it 100% has. Um, it, it, it is very interesting to hear, you know, we talk about the ducks in Iowa because that's yep. where we hunt. Um, but to hear um, on the uh, east side of the coast at NC State, uh, talk to them a while, just what they get for ducks. It, it's super interesting and to hear the different perspectives of how they hunt them and what they do for them and – it is very, very cool to hear. Tim, what do you th- what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely, kind of going off what Gage said, just hearing what everybody else just gets for ducks, and some people are like, "Oh my gosh, a mallard!" <laughs> and then yeah. while we're over here, we're like, "That's all we have are mallards." Yeah. <laughs> so, but also just trying to like listen and just hear how everybody else is raised. Um. Like some some people didn't hunt all their life and they're doing this for the conservation aspect, which we all pro all probably are to be honest. But um, hunting definitely isn't on the top of their list. Um, but they still like love the waterfowl community. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna speak on it too. I I, I just think it's cool. Because you- we we're, were talking about this by the campfire every day. Like every decision you make leads up to meeting different people and different things happening in your life. Like I mentioned earlier, I never thought I'd get involved with waterfowl hunting or DU or anything like that. And all it takes is a small decision that leads up to that. Um, but going into that, like just third term in general and meeting people from all different backgrounds, like it's such a d- diverse culture. Like you meet people from all over the place, different experiences growing up, raised differently. Um, thick accents sometimes, <laughs> yeah. um, but they yeah. say that about you too. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> really? Yeah. I, we don't Got have any. I guess accent. it's it's normal for us. But yeah, but yeah, it, it it was a really good time, and I'm just I'm grateful that I got to meet so many awesome people, and it, it's cool to watch everything all come together too. Because you have to think about how much work Ducks Unlimited puts in. I know you're there doing some work too, so uh, yeah, it, it's a great atmosphere, good time. So yeah, no, I encourage anyone and everybody. Oh, yeah. If you ever get a chance to come to third term, like definitely jump on it. Take oh, yeah. So that's one thing I, d- I didn't go to third term when I was in college. Like I was lightly involved with the DU chapter at South Dakota State, but never did like jump on the opportunity to go to third term. Mm-hmm. So it does. Yeah, do wish I would have done that, but it, it changes a lot. Yeah, not only yeah. for yourself but for your chapter as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what when I went, our chapter had our best banquet the year after. Mm-hmm. So just mm-hmm. the things I took away from it. Um, when it came to like recruiting or um, just meeting ideas in general, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cool, good to hear. Um, 
So earlier you guys were kind of talking about like some things like maybe that motivated you to get into waterfowl hunting or like maybe change your mind about something. Um, and that was social media. You saw something on social media that kind of like drove you to try something. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on social media and in the hunting industry or just outdoor industry in, in general? Um, like from your, like hearing from like your stories, like it's a great, it's a great uh, piece to hear. Or it's great to hear that like social media kind of introduced you to like kind of different things that were out there and you kind of could try these things. Um, but what do you think on a even grander scale? Um, what are your thoughts on social media? I, uh, I think it's great for the sport and honestly all hunting and all conservation. Um, I think it shows, you know, say I'll use you for example. Um, you know, nobody in your family hunted. Mm. Um, you don't have really anybody to kind of show you that side of what we do. Um, and I think social media does a great job of you can see whatever you want to see. And, hey, I'm kind of interested in duck hunting maybe or maybe go shoot some geese. Um, and you can go and watch that and be like, oh, that seems kind of interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, I think I think there's a good side and a bad side to it. Um, kind of leaning towards the good side a little bit more. Uh, we were talking about it the other day, just watching the different content people produce nowadays. It just gets you hyped up when you're watching all these different videos of them shooting a bunch of birds or just getting ready to get out there for a hunt. Um, but then you have the bad side of things where sometimes hunters are portrayed as a negative people um, for just taking lives of animals and things like that. Um, I wish it was more used towards like the conservation aspect, like how hunters actually care the most about conservation, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think I think there's good sides and bad sides, um, especially if there's people doing illegal stuff out there and maybe posting that or um, making other hunters look bad by shooting over their limits or something mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. those lines. So, Yeah, definitely. I, I totally agree with you. I think there's definitely both good and a bad side, but mostly good um, with kind of the marketing for all these new waterfowl companies and um, previous waterfowl companies, especially Ducks Unlimited, I feel like, has grown substantially just because of social media and right. just spreading all the awareness. Um, and I think it also just shows the beauty and how much, like you said, hunters are truly, I believe, one of the most passionate conservationists that I know. Um, but then I think there are bad sides, sadly, where hunters do post uh, unethical things, um, like Logan said, shooting over their limit or crippling birds and not taking ethical shots to truly dispatch a bird the correct way um but no i definitely think that social media has shined a bright light on waterfowl and kind of showing everybody in the world and that's good in it that's something we were talking about the other day is um yesterday when we were camping but um how we just wish everybody can go out and try it at least once mm -hmm. before they they kind of give their opinion on it because all it took was that one hunt for me, one hunt for Tim, Gage, like majority of hunters, it takes one hunt and you're just hooked like that. Mm -hmm. um, and you start enjoying the different aspects of it with nature and the actual work that goes into the marshes and the way the ducks work and how migration works and all the, all the different details that go into it. So do you guys, so I'm trying to remember, um, I'm trying to think about, the timeline of social media. So we're, sure. have you guys ever been at a point in your life where you haven't had social media? Mm -hmm. Like to a point where it's like, obviously like you, you made your first account. So you didn't make your first account when you're first born or whatever, but like, yeah. Yeah. like do you ever remember <laughs> yeah. a point where you didn't have social media? I think really? I, I think I got my first account when I was about eighth, seventh or eighth grade, probably. Um, and I think it started with Snapchat, and then like. And that was Snapchat. Snapchat was your first account. Snapchat, I got in twenty twenty fourteen. <laughs> oh I got oh it. Gosh. So, um, what is that? That's a long time ago now. That's a decade ago, yeah. and I was twelve years old, I guess. Um, and then I think I hopped on Instagram right after. But um, social media is nowhere, where, or it's came so far from where it was originally. Right. Like it, it's completely changed the landscape of everyone's lives. I want to kind of ask you, like, the reason for that is. Can you imagine what the hunting industry would be like without social media? 
That's yeah, a, it would a not be what it is question. today. I, 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 I think I can safely say that it would not be what it is today, and especially with technology um, growing everything, whether whatever industry you're in, mm-hmm. um, I, do, I do not think it would be what it is today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I personally don't think I would have been so hooked if I didn't have social media. Um, although I had a great first hunt experience and everything like that, like it's the videos after that I'm watching. I'm like, okay, like I want to get out there and keep doing it and go out there. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know if I would have stuck around more so if I wasn't getting constant engagement coming to my attention when I first got hooked. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting. Like, like even just sitting here, think about it now. It's like social media has played such a big role in our lives. It's like, and kind of what you were saying too, about how, like kind of things just fall together like how just things just happen for for whatever reason it's like like social media probably plays a role in that a little bit where it's like would you even be at iowa state if social media was even a thing or what yeah it wasn't a thing yeah so like would you even have that opportunity to even know about like the opportunities outside of the general area that you grew up um Mm -hmm. and things like that that's very true as well so i think it's, it's played a a big role in all of our lives and it's like it's hard to think like where you would be without it. Um, and cause I, I wouldn't be here. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is crazy. Mm-hmm. But, um, but like you said too, it's kind of, you gotta be responsible. With yep. it. It's, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. gotta make sure that you're being just a steward of, of the land and, um, a good representative of, of the, industry in the community that do go out there and do things by the books and want to make sure that mm-hmm. um, they come across as um, just good ethical kind of hunters and outdoorsmen and women so but yeah no it's, it's there's, a, there's a lot you could go into about oh, the social yeah. media stuff mm-hmm. um, but so outside of all the waterfall stuff that we have discussed like you guys are involved with the deep chapter you do a lot of hunting what mm-hmm. do you guys do outside of all of that um outside of hunting um well i do all types of hunting now so (laughs) just more hunting. uh, yeah yeah, it's just more hunting for the most part um i'm also so i'm also involved in the military um i joined the iowa army national guard here in june of 2022 um took a semester off of school in 2023 the first spring semester of that year Uh, went down to fort benning georgia for six months did my training uh came back and now i do it one weekend a month um two to three weeks every summer and then possibilities of deployment. So um, that's something I'm involved with um, along with just working a normal job outside of, outside of school and hunting. So um, pretty busy schedule for the most part, but um, try to do the best I can at everything I do. So I'd say all I can think about is uh, work, go to school and hunt. That's uh, I fish in the summertime when there's no hunting seasons, Um, but deer once it gets cold and, Pheasants when it when it gets really cold, um, and springtime turkeys. I love it all. It's mm-hmm. about pretty much all I do. I'm on <laughs> yeah. the same boat. I feel like hunting's just about all I do, and when I'm not hunting, I spend my money <laughs> not not in the best ways on hunting stuff. Um, <laughs> decoys, uh, shells, new gun. Can never have too much of that stuff. Um, but no. Throughout the summer, um, we try and we have a little piece of property back home where we try and get this one little duck hole always fixed every year, but we always seem to keep on running into problems (laughs) with it. Um, Just for me, it's just a never-ending preparation for hunting uh, until hunting season starts, building new blinds, dressing the blinds, planting food plots um but to me hunting is pretty much my lifestyle it's what i do and look forward to every day well you're big in the gym now tim aren't you yeah you're <laughs> always working <laughs> out throughout the summer months. week keep your body in shape carrying all them decoys he's, yeah he's prepping <laughs> he's prepping for hunting season <laughs> a That's mile into the marsh and <laughs> really paid off to the running <laughs> through the dying. three foot deep muck yeah, it was uh, it was thick today. There was a lot of biomass in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stank. Yes, <laughs> it did stank, stank really bad. Yeah. So, like, you guys have formed, like, these bonds here at college. Um, mm-hmm. 
over the years and you've done a lot of hunting together and things of that nature um but now after college logan you're graduating gage where, where are you at again i'm a junior junior yep. and then Tim, junior as well. Tim's a junior mm-hmm. um have you guys thought about after college of what things will be like yep so yeah that's something big i so to keep mentioning ducks unlimited mm-hmm. um i push my chapter very heavily especially the newer people um i always mention how there's du adult chapters out there no matter regardless of where you're living after school. Um, It's a good thing to be involved with throughout school, but um, for example, I give out every single meeting. I tell the the student chapter here, I'm like, say you get a job out in uh, New York or North Carolina, um, and you're not going to know too many people out there. Um, By finding a DU chapter near you, there's so many out there. Um, It gives you a good group of people to just start making friends right there initially. So um, I'm fortunate enough where I'm staying around the Ames area after college. doing some work out here, um, probably getting to hunt with these guys quite a bit too. Um, but, yeah, that, that's my plan as of right now. So, I can't say I have a clue what I'm going to do not after sure college yet. yet. Nope. Yeah, not. Have you thought about just maybe what it would be like, say, if you did move away and, um, like, would you still have that motivation to go out kind of by yourself and um, go hunting or to find people or how you would find people? Yeah, I'd probably still join a Ducks Unlimited chapter, um, and I'd – go immediately to the public atlas to find where i can hunt (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah start door knocking yeah i haven't quite uh thought that far ahead but i will soon right i got a year (laughs) Uh, i mean yeah i think definitely kind of helps kind of living out of state because now i've built the out-of-state connections uh right you've gone through that process kind of once i was gonna say you've build the out-of-state connections so now i know people who live in other states and i know they're huge into waterfowl so just one text or phone call away and meet up and go hunt or but definitely i think after college for sure joining a adult chapter and just to still have that motivation and drive to keep on conserving and hunting it for the future mm-hmm. is there any place uh places out there that you kind of is what is your dream hunt oh boy mm-hmm. like if you, uh, really list. List. <laughs> let's, let's do uh for waterfowl like what is a dream maybe like it could be maybe you're going after a dream duck or um like is, is there an area you area you want to hunt like what's something that you've seen where like someday i want to get there um arkansas timber I that's, think we can that's all agree what i was getting at um, we we had this conversation the other day. Um, I mentioned I want I really want to go down to Arkansas and hunt the timber. Um, the, the Dakotas obviously have really mm-hmm. good duck populations as well, um, but I, I don't know. I really want to go check out the timber down there. Um, the one duck I haven't got an opportunity to shoot yet is a a pintail. Um, so that's probably the duck I'm chasing the most right now that I want to shoot. Um, probably get it mounted right away too, just because I haven't had the opportunity to shoot one. So. I I, uh, I really want to go to the Prairie Northwest and shoot some cotton tops. I Ooh. think that would be awesome. Oh, yeah. um, and it, it is – so I'm in turf grass management, um, and that is where pretty much, like, all of grass seed is grown in North America. So it's, like, kind of a a mix, and that's what the ducks feed on down mm-hmm. there. So, it, yeah, I want to go to Prairie Northwest. Just get a, just get hired by a company that works a lot out there yeah, in that that's area right. and then just go on business trips and then make sure it's planned out where you're hunting them as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. yeah. No, I think Arkansas timber is definitely uh, one of the higher ones on the list, but I'd love to go to Alaska, kill some sea ducks yep, and that'd be some, some brands that'd be cool. and yep. all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, Texas lessers would be fun too. Yeah, Texas lessers Texas would be, would be fun. fun. Definitely an entirely different ball game, but oh, yeah. I think that'd be fun. Some sandhill crane. <laughs> yeah, rib eyes in the sky. I'm talking about that. Yeah. What about these hunts make them like something that stands out to you guys? We can't do it here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a big thing with the Arkansas. And I, going back to your social media question, it's just I like the bottomland camo pattern. First of all, <laughs> yeah, um, look at yourself. You got you got a nice bottomland new bottomland oh, yeah, hat, new on. hat from this weekend. Um, but the other big thing is like social media you see on TikTok or Instagram, people just ripping their boats through the flooded timber and it just, it looks so cool out there. And that's, that's something we don't get here in Iowa. It's more, uh, just marshes and you're either taking your boat in, 
through like a pond or lake or whatever that may look like for you guys um or we're walking in but i don't know something about ripping a boat through the timber just looks so cool to me mm -hmm. It's cool, but it's also for someone that's never done it before. It's scary. scary. Oh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. it is. I'm sure. That's a, that's another thing. Like, so these guys are asking me like stories, like crazy stories from my travels and stuff. And that's another thing. It's like uh, uh, piggybacking on like every weekend. I'm like trusting these these <laughs> random kids <laughs> that I message on social media, like with my life every weekend yeah. through the hunting season. <laughs> and like that's another situation where it's like in Arkansas, these guys from arkansas state they throw you in a boat and like all right hold on <laughs> and then you can't see nothing all you see is a spotlight out front yeah. and you're just zipping past <laughs> cypress trees so. oh man but yeah that's it's just it's a it's wild out there and i hope any i hope everybody gets a chance and if they're interested like to get to experience like these different types of hunting like and it's not necessarily like if you have a good hunt like I, who cares if you like in my opinion who cares if you shoot a duck like just get a chance experience. to experience oh, yeah. like how yeah. someone else hunts in those areas because it is just i just it changes your world and uh and just everything mm -hmm. so just c being able to experience that and um be there for a weekend it's, it's something special oh yeah so so in third term is a great way to have those conversations oh, yeah. to possibly yeah. Because I know, I, yeah, students there, they'll trade, like, kind of trade hunts yeah. where it's like, yeah, yeah. come on up to That's Montana or Iowa. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, you're more than welcome to come down mm -hmm. to Arkansas. Yeah. So, and, and that's and it's a unique thing about students, and like, um, especially working with college kids and with campus waterfowl. It's like, like, I, I get to do this because, like, I'm going out there making content, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But there's nothing stopping other college students from doing the same thing I do, where, like, all it takes is, like, you can. Like I, I post a ton of content, sharing hunts of students across the country. Like nothing's stopping you from messaging so and so from a piece of photo that yeah, I post and ask and just starting a conversation, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then it could lead to yeah you going down there for a weekend and going hunting, no, so and true. just crashing at each other's place, yeah. places <laughs> and like saving costs that way and mm -hmm. just and just running gunning. So mm -hmm. yeah, a good point. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So I always have to tell it's it's sad that i have to tell people that <laughs> it's like i i want you guys to just be like dude that guy that looks interesting i wonder how that like that hunt went like shoot him a message you know yeah, a message on instagram completely fair so it's one of the beauties of social media yep yep, yep. Oh, and yeah. so and do it do it now while you're in college because that's exactly. easier Almost now than, than, than it is once you get get hired get a full-time job do all that stuff mm -hmm. so but um, anything else you guys can think about? We're I think we're getting close to an hour here. Yeah. So, anything you guys can think of? Is there more to Iowa than corn and soybeans? Pigs. More pigs and people. More pigs and people. That's about what it. What else? Yeah. What else um, do we need to know about Iowa? The Midwest, nice. It is very true. I don't Another know if you've experienced. Right? Uh, I don't know if you've experienced it, but it's very true. Small town Iowa, it's my favorite place to be. That's a yeah. That's a big, big eye opener for me coming yeah. from Chicago, um, where people can be sometimes rude or mean, and I don't know. There's just a different atmosphere here in Iowa. I remember my first day coming to the state and just interacting with people at restaurants and the way they just they you're just treated so well here, mm -hmm. um, and that's probably like my favorite part about Iowa. Um, along with all the people I've met here and experiences I've had. Um, so, yeah, I, I do agree with that quite a bit. Sorry to flame all the Iowa drivers, but definitely <laughs> not not the best of drivers. <laughs> Get out of the left lane if you're going to be going 65 <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> so what's funny is we say the same thing about Illinois drivers. <laughs> you know what we can talk about is the national anthem this morning. Oh, oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. That Tim, you can bring it up because um, – Actually – my roommate, uh, the kid that I mentioned earlier, uh, who lives in Wisconsin, he was the one who first kind of showed me his tradition. Uh, he likes to play the national anthem uh, before every hunt. Uh, just kind of makes you think, uh, think back and just be thankful for uh, that you're able to kind of do this stuff every day and that there's people out there sacrificing their own lives that way. You can do what you love and have fun, mm -hmm. but it's a very cool tradition, and I think it should be one that 
most people give a try and carry on. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool to, to witness this morning where just stand, we're all waiting for shooting light and what, maybe it was five, ten minutes before mm-hmm. shooting light. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys start asking, like, what national anthem are we going to start playing? I'm like, <laughs> <Chris Staple>. what? <laughs> you, then you're rambling off, like, who <laughs> different national anthems and cr- this morning, Chris Stapleton. <laughs> yeah. Did sport. a great job. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, I thought that was really cool that you guys did that and um, hand over heart and everything, hats off. It was, it was something to – to witness as yeah as someone a newcomer coming into the group um so yeah I think uh, it's cool ducks the ducks coming in and doing it dirty and landing perfectly in the spread <laughs> while playing the national anthem was definitely the icing on the cake really gives you the chills but mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that was cool it's when you're looking at your phone just counting down the seconds yep, of when yep. shooting night is <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh cool yep. um is there any one one question I always ask toward the end of the podcast is any advice that you have for anyone that may be getting into waterfowl hunting, getting new to college, um, is into waterfowl hunting, maybe wants to get into waterfowl hunting, anything like that. Any, what advice would you want to share? It yeah. does not take as much as you would think. Yeah. Um, Money, time. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Probably needs a time. Um, <laughs> scouting, I think, is the most important thing, but. Um, I guess back to the social media thing you see everywhere, you know, you got to have the nicest decoys, the nicest guns, the nicest stuff to shoot ducks. Mm-hmm. You don't. Um, you could go out there with a six-pack puddler pack from your local Shields and whatever shotgun you can get your hands on and shoot ducks. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's one big misconception, misconception of the industry. Yeah, and I know I know you mentioned something relative to like people new to college too, um, and the biggest thing um, I actually just worked at career fair for my company not too long ago, um, and I just tell everyone just stay calm. The biggest piece of advice I can give you is get involved with as many things as possible, especially if it's your first year. Um, I mentioned previously I didn't know a single soul when I came to Iowa State. I came out here on a whim, um, got involved with so many different things, and met tons of people along the way. So. Um, definitely stay involved with a lot of different things. Um, and then like Gage said with hunting, you don't, you don't need anything special and it, it does take a little bit of time, obviously, um, um, setting up and everything like that, um, and scouting birds. Um, mm-hmm. but for equipment wise, you can use just about anything mm-hmm. out there. It doesn't have to be crazy expensive or so. Oh, yeah. Time and hard, time and hard work is all you pretty much need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I would say get out there and try something new the worst thing that can happen is you don't like it and you don't want to do it again um if you don't go out and try something new you might miss out on something that could change your whole life like it did for all of us if we never went out on that one hunt we all probably would not be here right now yeah. mm-hmm. and not have the same motivation and drive that we do to conserve and hunt uh every day in our life um but yeah i think definitely going along with what gage and logan said you do not need the top notch gear you don't need the sick of waders you don't need the fully flocked floaters from avian you don't need anything to necessarily be top notch i have a 350 fifty dollar pump that i've had for four years and it folds birds just as good as any other <laughs> shotgun. It's all about the shooter, not the gun. Some, something to mention, too, and just add into it. Um, even if you don't have someone to show the ropes to you, that's why there's YouTube and all the different social media mm-hmm. platforms now, as we've talked about throughout this whole podcast. Um, but I really think if it's you don't have someone to go out with or anything like that, you go out alone, say, for your first hunt maybe, it's all about trial and error. Mm-hmm. You, you learn exactly. a new thing from every hunt. Um, you, where did I go wrong? What, what can I do to improve myself going to the next one um what could i have done differently so um yeah i think i think anybody can get involved it's it's actually pretty simple um you see the videos and look up tutorials how to do things maybe how to blow a duck call Mm -hmm. i still got to look into that a little bit more but (laughs) that's um, what i learned (laughs) yeah there's so many different different ways to get involved so 
you bring up the equipment stuff. Do you guys uh, use like Facebook Marketplace for a lot of oh. stuff? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've, I've heard that a lot. Where yep. saves, <laughs> <Yep. laughs> saves you a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Find some used stuff. There's a lot of it on there. Right. I've bought and sold on Facebook Marketplace. It is it's an awesome site. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm always looking on there. Oh yeah. Yep. Good, cheap, cheaper way to get in. I mean, you can go find someone who's selling a dozen filler decoys for maybe 10 bucks and some cheap camo old school camo for five bucks for a shirt or 10 bucks for a pair of pants and Mm -hmm. well even you didn't you just buy your john boat on marketplace or yeah yep um did just buy my john boat got a good deal on it and me and my roommate rebuilt it he's also in the chapter um yeah just find stuff and it doesn't have to be the nicest stuff, just a little job. Exactly. Yep. And you don't need a boat to hunt necessarily, but nope. Nope. it's an added added addition. Mm-hmm. It's a plus. So, um, yeah, it's crazy that you found that marketplace. Um, mm-hmm. And you DIY it, DIY it yep. too. So, yep. you know, maybe you want to go into like what you put into it. Um, we did. Uh, it came with some flooring. It's like uh, decking boards. Okay. Um, so we redid the decking boards. Um, we did the f- or we actually put in uh, front headlights and interior lights, um, then just simple trailer maintenance, hmm. new wiring and replace the bearings. Yes. Yeah. So you got this. Will this be your first season with a boat then? Yep. Yeah. Sweet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, there we go. It's been awesome so far. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you get? Yeah. Did you get to use it for teal? Yeah. Or use it for use teal, it for and, teal. Then, and then this morning. Yep. Nice. Yep. Oh, cool. All right. Well, you guys feel good about that podcast? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Good time. All right. Well, one last call. When's the event? Uh, our event is October 12th um, at 5 p.m. up in North Ames at the Ames Moose Lodge. Um, so be there. Do they get their tickets at? Oh, you can get your tickets at uh, ducks.org. Um, you can go to my events, go to the state of Iowa, um, and you'll find ISU, uh, the dinner on there. Um, and like I said, just look for October 12th. They do a good job of labeling mm-hmm. um, kind of by date. So if you go down, scroll down a little bit, you'll find our event. So Do they have to do them online in advance? Can they get tickets at the door? No. Nope. So, yeah, you can buy tickets at the door. Um, we prefer to have people buy in advance just so that we have a good head count for catering and things like that. Um, but, yeah, you can mo- most certainly buy tickets at the door as well. All so right. You can also contact any one of us, and mm-hmm. we can help you out. All yeah. right. Yeah. Sweet. Feel good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ready to wrap it up? Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, that's going to do it here at Iowa State for our collegiate waterfowl tour. Uh, Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you in the next one.